In this PowerPoint, we're going to review how to characterize mixture concentration, in particular, aqueous homogeneous mixtures known as solutions. The surface of the Earth is 71% water. This means that aqueous solutions are one of the most common types of mixtures that we deal with. And just as a review of terms, a solution is another term for a homogeneous mixture, one that is mixed well on the molecular level. The components of a solution are known as solute and solvent. We usually say that the solute is the mixture component that is dissolved in the solution, while the solvent is the component that the solute is dissolved in or that does the dissolving. Another way of thinking of this is by relative amounts. Solutes are generally present in smaller amounts in a solution, while the solvent is the component that's present in the greatest amount. And finally, the term aqueous solution just means that water is the solvent. So solutions can have variable composition, and this means a solution may contain a lot of solute or just a little. To describe a solution well, you must define both the identity of the solute and solvent, as well as the relative proportions. Terms like dilute and concentrated allow us to describe the relative amounts qualitatively, but concentrations allow us a much more precise definition. And a concentration is simply a mathematical expression of the amount of solute in a given amount of solution. Molarity is one of the most common expressions of concentration that we use in chemistry. It's defined as the ratio of moles of solute dissolved per liter of solution. The unit is often expressed as a capital M. And when you see this, it's important to remember that this symbol simply stands for the ratio of moles of solute per liter of solution. Let's do a sample calculation of molarity. We'll look at a solution made by dissolving 34 grams of ammonia, that's NH3, in water, which is going to be our solvent, to make 2.00 times 10 to the third milliliters of solution. That's the same as 2,000 milliliters. As with any chemistry problem, we start by figuring out what we're given and what we're trying to find. And in this case, we're given the mass of our solute ammonia and the total volume of the solution. We're asked to find the concentration in molarity, that's the capital M. And we know the formula for molarity is moles of solute per liter of solution. Now the units of what I'm given in terms of the solute and the solution don't match the units that I need for my formula. I need to convert my grams of solute into moles. You know that you can do this by dividing by the molar mass of that solute. So the number 17.04 grams I actually gave to you in the problem is the molar mass, but you could also calculate this number given the periodic table mass of nitrogen and that of hydrogen. So 34 grams of ammonia divided by its molar mass, 17.04 grams of ammonia. The units cancel out for grams. I multiply by the other half of molar mass, one mole of ammonia, to get a final unit of moles. And 34 divided by 17.04 gives me 2.00 moles of ammonia. This is going to become the numerator in my formula. I also need to convert my volume of solution, which is going to be my denominator ultimately, into the appropriate unit of liters. So. I know that the relationship between milliliters and liters, one milliliter equals 10 to the negative third liters, and 10 to the negative third is the same as 0 0.001. So I take my volume in milliliters, I divide by one milliliter, my units cancel out, I multiply by 0 0.001 liters, and I end up with 2.00 liters total of solution. And that becomes the denominator in my formula. I plug both of those values in, and of course, 2.00 divided by 2.00 gives me 1.00 in this case. My moles per liter, um, the units moles and liters don't cancel out. I just use the abbreviation capital M, which I know stands for moles of solute per liter of solution. 
So if you know the molarity of a solution, you can also calculate the number of moles or mass of solute in that solution, or you can solve for the volume of solution that contains a certain amount of solute. For example, say that we wanted to know how many moles of sugar are found in 500 milliliters of soda that has a typical sugar concentration of 0.375 moles per liter. So given in this problem, we have the molarity of the solution and the volume of soda, and we're asked to find moles of sugar. So for our molarity calculation, we're going to use the formula, and we are given molarity straight, so we can substitute that directly into our formula. Our volume of solution actually has units of milliliters. We do need to convert that to liters before we substitute it in. So we use our conversion factor for uh, milliliters to liters. Um, so one uh, milliliter equals 10 to the negative third liters, or 0 0.001 liters. And when we multiply through with the milliliter on the bottom, the milliliter units cancel out. 500 times 10 to the negative third gives us 0 0.5 liters. And this is the number that we'll substitute in for our denominator, our volume of solution. Now we just want to solve for the one that we don't know, our moles. So to do this, we have to multiply both sides of the equation by 0 0.5 liters. And this will cancel it out on the right-hand side, leaving us with just moles, our unknown. And we're left with our moles is equal to 0 0.5 liters times 0 0.375 moles per liter. Now I'm going to rewrite this with the capital M um, written out as the actual ratio of unit moles per liter because it makes it easier to see that when you multiply your liters by moles per liter, the liters actually do cancel out and the unit that you're left with is going to be moles. So the last thing to consider is where to round this number. So I've made an assumption that in 500 milliliters, the two zeros that are uh, at the end of that number are actually placeholders. Without a decimal there, it's pretty ambiguous. And so I've just erred on the side of more error rather than less um, and assume that I have one significant figure for 0 0.5 liters and three for the molarity. That means that I should round my answer to the least number of significant figures, that's one. Um, and so that means I'm rounding to the tenths place and 0 0.18 rounds up to 0 0.2 moles of sugar. So here's another example. This time we're gonna solve for the volume of solution that contains a given amount of solute. If vinegar has a typical concentration of 0 0.839 moles per liter for acetic acid, what volume of vinegar contains 75.6 grams of acetic acid? So we're given the molarity and mass of acetic acid, and we're asked to find the volume of vinegar. So again, we can substitute our molarity directly into the formula. Our um, amount of solute is in the wrong units, though. We need moles, but we're given grams, so we do have to convert that into moles. And we'll do that simply by dividing the mass that we're given by the molar mass of acetic acid. And 60.052 grams is calculated over here using the periodic table masses and the formula for acetic acid. My grams of acetic acid actually cancel out. Uh, I multiply by one mole, the other half of a molar mass, and I end up with 1.2589 moles of acetic acid. And I'm going to carry a lot more decimal places right now than I really need. I'll wait until the end to actually round. So I substitute this into my formula. This time I want to get liters by itself, and it's one more step in rearranging to get a variable that's in the denominator by itself, because the first thing you have to do is actually get that variable out of the denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides by the liter variable, and it's going to cancel out on the right-hand side, and it's going to give me liters times my 0 0.375 equals 1.2589. Now, I want to get liters by itself, and this is easier to do when it's not in the denominator. I just have to divide both sides by 0 0.375. So it cancels out on the left-hand side, leaving me liters by itself. 
And on the right-hand side, I have 1.2589 moles divided by 0 0.375 moles per liter. So again, I'm going to write out that unit of moles, the capital M, in terms of its actual ratio, which is moles per liter, so that you can see a little bit more easily that moles really are going to cancel out in this calculation, and it's going to leave me with liters. Technically, it leads me with 1 over 1 over liters, uh, but um, 1 over a fraction is the same as the reciprocal of that fraction. So the reciprocal of 1 over liters is just plain liters. So I'm left with liters. So this is 3.357 liters. Again, I'm going to look at my significant figures, and I'm going to go back to my original measurement. Um, I have three significant figures in my molarity, three significant figures in my mass, which means that I should have three significant figures in my final answer. 3.357 rounds up to 3.36 liters of vinegar. A common variation of the molarity formula is known as the dilution formula. When you dilute a solution, you add solvent only. For example, if I wanted to dilute my tea, I'd add water to it, and the tea wouldn't be as strong. Here's a visual example of dilution with a solution made out of copper nitrate dissolved in water. And copper nitrate is blue, so the solution is colored blue. And on the left is the more concentrated solution. On the right, water has been added, and the total volume of the solution has changed, and the blue is less intense because it's been diluted. A very important to point to remember with this is that the actual amount of copper nitrate, our solute, has not changed. All we've done is add solvent. We've done nothing to the amount of solute. So while the total volume of the solution increases during the dilution process, the number of moles of solute does not change. What this means in terms of our concentration is that if the total volume of solution increases, our denominator goes up, our numerator, our moles, stays exactly the same, then the total value of that ratio is actually going to go down. Consider the difference between the fractions one-half and one-fourth. So for one-fourth, the denominator is actually a larger number, four. But the overall value of that fraction one-fourth is less than the overall value of one-half. And it's the same way for our molarity ratio. Anytime you increase a denominator but keep the numerator the same, the overall value of that ratio is going to decrease. In this case, the overall value of molarity, the concentration, goes down when you increase the volume of the solution but keep the number of moles the same. In terms of the dilution formula, the most important part is that the moles of solute do not change during the dilution process. Another way of saying this is that the moles of solute before dilution equal the moles of solute after dilution. Now we know that by rearranging our molarity calculation, that moles of our solute is simply equal to the molarity times liters of solution. We can use this relationship and our knowledge that moles before and after dilution are equal during dilution to derive the dilution formula. So this is one version of writing the dilution formula. It's simply that the molarity of your solution before dilution times the volume before dilution always equals the molarity of the solution after dilution times the volume after dilution. We usually write this formula more generically as C1 times V1 equals C2 times V2 where C1 equals the concentration of the solution before dilution and V1 equals the volume before dilution. C2 equals the concentration after dilution and V2 equals the volume after dilution. Let's look at an example of how to use this formula.
What is the concentration of the solution that results from diluting 0 0.0250 liters of a 2.04 molar solution of methanol, that's CH3OH, to 0 0.5000 liters? I know that this is a problem that's going to require the dilution formula primarily because it uses the term diluting. Another way of recognizing that you need to use the dilution formula is that it might, you might be asked what's the volume that's required to prepare a particular solution or what's the concentration of a stock solution that's required to prepare a different concentration. You will always have for a dilution formula three out of the four terms. So you may have two volumes and one concentration, or you may have two concentrations and one volume, and you'll be asked to solve for the last term. So in this case, I actually have two volumes and one concentration, and I know that V1 equals 0 0.0250 because the volume before dilution has to be the smaller of the two values. And that means that V2, the volume after dilution, has to be the larger volume, 0 0.500 liters. For uh, 2.04 moles per liter, I know that that is linked in the problem to 0 0.0250 liters. So if 0 0.025 is V1, then C1 must be the molarity that goes with it, 2.04. And that means that I am solving for C2, the concentration after dilution. I plug all these values into my formula, and I want to solve for C2. So that means I'm going to divide both sides by 0.5 liters, cancels out on the right-hand side, um, and I'm going to be left with C2 equals 2.04 moles per liter times 0 0.025 liters divided by 0 0.5 liters. The liter units cancel out. I'll be left with moles per liter is capital M, and my final concentration is 0 0.102 moles per liter. In terms of rounding, I look back at my original numbers to see where I have the least significant figures. The least value of significant figures is 3, which means my answer should have 3 significant figures. It already does. I don't need to do any more rounding. In summary, solutions are homogeneous mixtures made up of solutes present in smaller amounts and a solvent which is present in a larger amount. In aqueous solutions, the solvent is water. And molarity is one of the most common expressions of solution concentration you'll encounter in chemistry. It's always represented by a capital M, which means moles of solute over total liters of solution. And the dilution formula is a variation on this that allows you to calculate concentration or volume of solutions before and after dilution.